Hey, what's up guys? It's Tips and I'm back with some more Asmund Gold stream content for you. If you guys remember a couple of days back in my original Classic WoW Leaks video, I specifically mentioned the importance of progressive itemization in Classic WoW and I noted that based on what we were seeing in the Classic WoW demo, progressive itemization did not appear to be in the game at that time. Now it's totally possible that Blizzard simply may have not gotten to updating the items yet and that is why they are in their current 112 state. But seeing as a lot of you guys left comments asking me why progressive itemization was so important to begin with. I figured I would make this video today because it is an incredibly important subject, a subject that will clearly dictate the future and success of Classic WoW. So without further ado, here is why progressive itemization is important in Classic World of Warcraft. Now, some of you guys might be sitting down right now, scratching your heads like WTF is progressive itemization. If I were to put it bluntly in a simple sentence, I would say that progressive itemization is the replication of the original vanilla World of Warcraft patch cycle with regards to item stats, attributes, and rollout. Essentially what this means is that items would be released and or changed as they were back in vanilla. Now again, for a lot of you guys who didn't play back in the day or don't really know too much about vanilla WoW, some of the items that were made available at the game's launch changed over time. Some of them had stats changed, some items were completely overhauled, and some items were just added to pre-existing boss loot tables. These items were changed and or added to serve as a catch-up mechanic for a lot of the players that were coming in at like AQ patch and beyond that wanted to catch up and actually play current content, they were never intended to be in the game at the start of Vanilla WoW. But let me give you some specific examples because I know this topic is a little bit difficult to understand without knowing exactly what we're talking about. So I'll start off with this item right here, Spirit of Aquamentos. Now, as you guys can see here, Spirit of Aquamentos was a held and offhand item that decreased mana cost by 25, meaning that this item was probably intended for healers, although it was a quest reward in the Lincoln's quest chain. Really cool quest chain, by the way, that I might do a video on pretty soon. But... After four months in patch 1.3, Spirit of Aquamentos changed to have the following stats. Increases damage and healing done by magical spells and effects by up to 20. Here's another example of an item changing over time, and that is the Shadowcraft Boots. Now, as you guys can see here, Shadowcraft Boots originally had 21 agility and 9 stamina on them in Vanilla World of Warcraft. Or did they? They used to have 21 intellect on them. And uh, a little bit strange, I'm sure a lot of you guys associate Shadowcraft Boots to Rogues or the Rogue Dungeon set, um, which is technically true, although the Dungeon sets back in the day weren't necessarily class specific. But as you guys can see, going from 21 Intellect to 21 Agility changes things drastically. And this change actually makes Shadowcraft Boots one of the better items to get in PvP. It's not necessarily pre-raid Biss, it's not the best PvP boots to have in vanilla, but it is one of the better items after this change. And again, trivializes a lot of the progression leading up to this item. Next up, we have Diana's Pearl Necklace, which was actually added in patch 1.10. Taking a look at the stats right now, guys, plus eight stamina, plus eight intellect, spell hit, which was incredibly rare in early vanilla WoW, and of course, increases damage and healing done by magical spells and effects by up to nine, essentially nine spell power. This is an incredibly powerful item, guys. It's so powerful, as a matter of fact, that it invalidates Choker of the Fire Lord, which is the neck piece that drops off of Ragnaros and Molten Core, and guess what? Diana's Pearl Necklace, it doesn't drop off of a raid boss. It drops off of the Cannon Master in Stratholm. It didn't drop off of him in patch 1.1, but it did in patch 1.10. And patch 1.10 in particular, guys, is one of the biggest culprits for itemization changes in vanilla WoW. A lot of items that did not exist in the game previously were added in 1.10 and retrofitted on the loot tables of pre-existing bosses, which is one of the reasons why this is so devastating. You get to skip a lot of the early raid bosses in vanilla WoW if these items are added into the game because a lot of these items drop off of regular dungeon bosses. And not every added item was a drop. Some of them were crafted, as you can see here, with these titanic leggings, which were added in patch 1.10. Look at those stats, guys. Absolutely incredible. 2% hit chance, 1% crit, and a staunch 30 strength on leg plates. Compare that to the Marshall's Plate Leg Guards, which are the rank 12 leggings for warriors. And as you guys can see, these two items basically have the same stats. Obviously, you have 2% crit on the Leggards versus the 2% hit on the Titanic Leggings. But overall, these stats are pretty much identical. And if Titanic Leggings are in Classic WoW at the start, 
all of a sudden, warriors have no incentive to rank, except the rank 14 PvP weapons, which is essentially a three-month, 14-hour-a-day grind. A lot of people aren't going to do that crazy of a grind just for weapons. Again, just another example of how a lack of progressive itemization can completely destroy the progression curve. Here's another good one, the Spellweaver's Turban, which has 36 spell power, 9 intellect, an additional hit chance by 1%, which again is very, very rare for spell gear and vanilla WoW. This was added in patch 1.10 and is basically better than every cloth headpiece in the game up until Nefarian, but it drops off of Dracosath in UBRS. Another item that was added in a later patch to a pre-existing boss's loot table and subsequently invalidates almost all of the other content in the game up until Nefarian. I don't think I need to tell you why this is awful for the game. And even beyond regular dungeon gear, we also have reputation gear and reputation items, such as the recipe for transmute elemental fire that was introduced for the Thorian Brotherhood rep. Now, the reason why this is so controversial is that it essentially removes players from the world. Elemental fire is something that's used a lot in vanilla World of Warcraft to craft greater fire resistance potions. If you're able to transmute elemental fires, all of a sudden, you don't have to go out to Arathi and farm them off of burning exiles. You don't have to go kill fire elementals in the charred veil. You don't have to do anything out in the world because you can just loot Heart of Fires from raids and then use those to transmute into elemental fires. And all of a sudden, you're doing exactly what World of Warcraft has done for so many years. You're taking the world out of World of Warcraft and you're pigeonholing people into farming mats in dungeons, which is something that Vanilla WoW was not about at all. And this is something that happened in a much, much later patch. It did not exist in the start of Vanilla WoW and it should not exist in the start of Classic WoW. And finally, what's arguably the biggest offender of the progressive itemization change, here is the original Champion's Plate Headguard, which is part of the blue PvP set in vanilla. Look at the stats on it. Plus 31 stamina, plus 9 strength, plus 8 agility. Clearly not a DPS piece, clearly meant for PvP. But in patch 1.11, it was changed dramatically, it was upgraded dramatically. It now has a 1% crit chance increase and a 1% hit chance increase on top of having a lot more strength and albeit a little bit less stamina. It goes from being a strictly PVP piece to being one of the best PVE pieces in the game. And not only did the stats change, but the set bonuses changed too. It went from having a two set piece of increasing chance to parry to plus 40 attack power. That's crazy. And some caster classes, I think it's mages in particular, their two set bonus for their blue PVP set is like one of the best two set bonuses in the game until Nax, which is a year and a half after launch. Completely invalidates next to all PVE content in lieu of farming ranks 8 to 10 in vanilla WoW. Here is Grand Marshal's Longsword, which is obviously the rank 14 weapon for Alliance players. It's a one-handed sword. It has 2.9 speed, 49.7 DPS, increases your chance to crit by 1% and 12 attack power. But as of patch 1.11, it now has 59.5 DPS, 28 attack power, and is officially the best in-slot item for PvE Fury Warriors all the way up until Nax. I think progressive itemization might be a good idea. At the end of the day, these items were introduced or changed as a catch-up mechanic. Therefore, they should not be in Classic WoW at launch. It would be absolutely destructive to Classic WoW's longevity. So after we've gone through these examples, why is progressive itemization important? Well, first and foremost, it preserves content difficulty. Obviously, if you have an item that's 30% stronger than any item in the game and you're using it at a time that it was never meant to be used, it is going to invalidate a lot of content. But that's not the crux of the progressive itemization argument. That's not what the argument is based off of because at the end of the day, content like Molten Core is not that difficult to begin with, albeit I think it's a lot harder than some people realize or some people expect it to be. The real reason why progressive itemization is so important is that it keeps current content relevant and it does not trivialize raids. One thing I've heard Asmongold say a couple of times is that the problem with World of Warcraft today is that you're playing the patch, you're not playing the game. When you take away progressive itemization, you're basically doing the same thing. You're no longer playing World of Warcraft, you're only playing a specific patch because the gear that you're getting from basic dungeon bosses 
is so much better than the gear that drops off of Molten Core and Blackwing Lair that all of a sudden the only relevant content in the game for you is AQ and Nax. And that is a huge problem because AQ40 and Nax Ramus are only two of the seven raids in World of Warcraft. Why on earth would you take five raids out of the equation and take away that progression from World of Warcraft? I have no freaking idea. And that is why progressive itemization is very, very key. On top of that, it keeps world content relevant. Remember how we talked about those Titanic leggings in patch 1.10? If you have those in the game, all of a sudden, you don't care about Devil Sword leggings. You don't care about going out in the world and farming Devil Sword leather. You don't care about farming elemental fire out in the world anymore because you have your transmute recipe and all you need is Heart of Fires that drop from raids. Keep those items relevant. Keep progressive itemization in the game so people are more inclined to leave capital cities to seek out those items. And I'll call back to my progression video that I made last week. Progressive itemization in Classic WoW will help maintain a smooth end game progression curve and keep a player's progression sequence linear. And we talked about how important that was in that other video. You guys can check it out after this one. I don't want to get into it too much. But at the end of the day, a solid, smooth, linear progression curve is very, very important in RPGs and it should definitely exist in Classic WoW. But in conclusion, progressive itemization is incredibly important in Classic as it preserves content difficulty, maintains a smooth endgame progression sequence, and allows the game to be experienced as it was back in 2004 to 2006. But guys, at the end of the day, I'm just one lonely neckbeard out here. What do you guys think about all this? I want to hear your opinions on progressive itemization in Classic WoW. Let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to check out your opinions and I'll bring up the interesting ones on stream. I did last time. I think it's really, really fun to talk about this stuff. But thank you for watching the video, guys. And if you liked what you saw, sub it up and stick around because we got more coming. And for more classic WoW content news and updates, you can follow me on the social media listed right there on the screen. But aside from that, have a wonderful day, fellas. See you guys on Twitch. And as always, tips out, baby.